very nearly finished and we've got some lights coming here as well so i've been on the metro many times uh, you can see my videos previously but i've never really done a metro basics for people that may be visiting shanghai and want to know how to easily use the metro system how to pay uh, and various other details of the system so that's what i will do today some system basics construction started in 1986 line one first opened in 1993 and that was actually here at xuja way to the south railway station which is four stations that way. Uh, line 2 then opened in 1996 and it expanded ever since, especially around the 2010 Shanghai World Expo. There are 18 numbered lines, but you can also add the Pujang line, the Maglev line and the Jinshan light rail line if you want to boost it to 21. On those 18 lines, they have 802 kilometres of track and 408 unique stations, smaller than New York, which I think is at 424. If you count stations twice with two lines on them, for example, there are actually 506 platforms that way. To spot where uh, metro entrance is, look for these signs here with the S and the M for the Shanghai Metro. So here we have entrance 11 going into Xu Jiahui Station. And there's a sign for exit 11 that we just used to get in and straight on to the map. There's the 18 lines, but also the Pujang line at the south of line 8, the Maglev line going out to Pudong Airport, and the Jinshan line going down south there. It's worth noting these as well, which are the out of station transfers. We've got five on the system here, 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 and then over here in the west around uh, Hongqiao Airport. Now those out of station transfers mean you have to go from one station to another over ground. You can do that uh, if you do it within 30 minutes with a Shanghai public transportation card or if you are using the app. If you are using a single use card, you have to buy another ticket. These are the single trip ticket machines. They're becoming quite rare now. You can see they're also a little bit disused. Uh, you can change the language by this button in the top right corner. Uh, let's keep that in English. We're on line one. We're at Xu Jiahui. Let's go to South Huangpi, which is also the site of the first CPC National Congress. Okay, then we'll click on that. Three RMB, put that in there. One, two, uh -huh. that one. And then we get our card. Okay, which is usually a lot thinner and flexible in comparison to the public transportation card. All entrances on the metro system have these uh, security x-ray machines. They were put in place during the World Expo in 2010 and they've never left. One other thing of course that's possible to use is an app on the phone screen where you have a QR code uh, which is very easy to use. And we are in. There are various services in the metro stations. There are still cash machines. You can also buy uh, drinks and flowers. This is the line one part of the station and you can see we've also got nine and eleven here which are way over in the distance. All stations will have a service desk which looks like this. They can help you out with any queries and sometimes they can fix a, a problem that you might have with your, with your card. Other services. Xu Jiahui is definitely one of the biggest stations. You can see there's 19 exits in total. Shanghai Metro convenience information or in Chinese it's the uh, DTA. Uh, it also has this little mascot which I think is called Chang Chang. Each station also has start and finish times usually at the entrances. So you can see that's line 11 starting generally 6 a.m. through to 11 p.m. Yet more of the Xu Jiahui station, quite big. The uh, Zootopia section of Shanghai Disney is opening very soon. And line 11 here actually terminates at the Disney Resort and that's why they are keen to put adverts in this station. Here we are basically in the middle of Xu Jiahui. So line one that way, 11 that way, and nine this way. There are often escalators both down and up from the mid-level down to the platform 
and a lot of stations are this style where you've got a central island with the lines both sides. 90% of the stations have got toilets on the platform. Sign for the elevator, but in fact there isn't one and that's sometimes in the older stations the elevator will be behind a locked door and you need to talk to the uh, platform officer but supposedly 100% of the stations do actually have wheelchair access even if it means sometimes having to be inconvenienced by uh, contacting some staff here above ground at exit one we've got the start and finish times again for the three lines and also this accessibility information so for line one they're recommending this inclined elevator at exit nine and then for nine and eleven elevator at exit 18. It's also worth pointing out that almost all of the entrances have these steps. Here we are at entrance 9 and indeed we do have a ramp up and down to get over this little step here and we have as they call it the angled elevator or a stair lift as we would and we have instructions here I guess you have to use this intercom we seem to be missing some instructions there and there is a board out here unfortunately only in Chinese but it does indeed say you know if you need help then please ring this number so help is available and everything has access and the same at the bottom there's the intercom and controls info board and ramp Entrance 18 is part of this uh, large construction site that's been ongoing, so let's have a look. It's a brand new entrance and in fact is much better. So we've got this ramp here for wheelchairs and prams, and we've got all of the options. So we've got some normal stairs there, some escalators, and then over here is the elevator. And it's worth pointing out, you know, thankfully we've got everything in dual language. So we've got the Chinese characters and then also the, uh, the English down to B1 and an assistant panel and then here we are it's still got these uh, building boards here because it's still ongoing that elevator took us to the the mid level of the station and here we have another elevator that will take us down to the platform usually listed as B2 there we go um, it's kind of a newer station line 9 and so that's why it's got these elevators uh, in comparison to line 1. And there we are, line 9 again is a central platform. There are belts where wheelchairs and prams can be secured. So on this platform we do have an elevator that's actually here but what you need to do is press this button and then actually talk to somebody to get the uh, elevator to come. We've just used the elevator, the guy's got a key there and we're actually behind the scenes in the station and he's going to now let us out. So that's an interesting look behind the scenes there. And okay and what that does is it's put us out in the general public so we've gone through the paywall which I didn't really want to do uh, and that's one of the reasons that your card can sometimes get mixed up some of the exits are these double widths well this is an entrance actually let's see if this works no you see so now I have to go to the service station I have to go to the service station because that elevator let me out in the wrong place so it can be a little bit inconvenient anyway I'm going to use the single ticket yes there are around about 11 million rides a day. The busiest line is line two, that's the one that goes between the, the east and the west. It usually gets uh, over a million journeys just on that one line itself. Uh, there's also to help navigation maps inside the carriage and you can see there's all of the transfer lines again. We've just simply gone from Shutaway to the indoor stadium and back again. There, there are rules about um, not making much noise, eating or drinking.
With the single use card, we lose it. There we go. Some details on the entrance and exits. So you use the QR codes from your app smartphone with this window here, and then you put in the single tickets here, or you just simply tap with the multi use tickets on there. Don't lose your multi use ticket, it won't fit in the slot actually. So there's the machines for the uh, single journey tickets, and these machines are used to charge up the uh, public transportation card. And again, we go into English. Okay, and then we want to top up. And so we just follow the instructions on the screen. So we put the card in there and we will use WeChat Pay. Okay, and I'll say 100 RMB. And then confirm that, confirm again, and then show my phone to the machine here thinking about it do I want a receipt no please take out your card and that's it we're done so here we are at the service desk for line nine it's worth saying a little bit more about the card uh, you can buy them for 100 RMB at the service desks 20 RMB of that goes to a deposit for the card and the other 80 RMB is usable they can be used on almost all other services so the ferry the bus and also the metro services at places like Hangzhou and Suzhou there are other cards available there's a three-day card or a one-day card and there's also a maglev kind of return to the airport one day card as well i'm not sure the price is i think the three day is something like 45 rmb personally i'd recommend you know just get one of these cards if you're here for something like the weekend or the week and are a tourist there are some details about the different cards there and also some other info however if we come to the standard machine and say we wish to buy there's only the standard card available and you can see there's the 20 RMB deposit so it would be a case of going to the service desk and hopefully they have different cards if you want them one last machine you hardly ever see these at all and it's the it's the add value machine these these machines do the same thing I've noticed that the Metro is actually changing the kind of three bar gates into these ones I believe they stop people cheating and jumping over the gates or under. I don't know if this is a metro rule as such, but you will find a passport photo booth in every station. Look, there's another. To make your journey smoother, it's always worth knowing your terminal station. So you can see that's line 11 going to Disney, which is the terminal bags on the metro it might be worth having a quick note about what you can take on there are restrictions i can't remember the cubic size but any bag needs to be less than 23 kilograms and they don't allow any bikes at all uh, things need to be less than 1.8 meters uh, long i learned that just today and anybody can take any adult can take two children as long as they're less than 1.3 meters tall for free a lot of metro stations interface directly into shopping malls and the same is the case here at Xu Jiaohui with Line 9 going into Grand Gateway. So it's quite busy this afternoon. The system has 7,000 trains or thereabouts uh, in total. They go at about 80 kilometers an hour but that changes on what line you're on. Line 16 goes faster at 120 kilometers an hour. The shortest line is Line 6 at about 32 kilometers and the longest line is 11 at 82 kilometers or thereabouts. Okay, here we are at, let's see, we're at Shanghai Indoor Stadium. Um, there are altogether um, seven automated lines that don't have any drivers. That's if you include the Pujang line, which makes the Shanghai network the most automated apart from Singapore. I've only gone one station today just to show you how the system works. We have these quite convenient strips here so we know that this side of the track goes this way because of the coloured bar and you can see all the names of the stations and which other lines they intersect with. There's also these boards so I know that my next train is going to come in one minute and 30 seconds and also I know the time of the following trains. If 
the line splits like line 11 does for example then you need to use those boards to make sure you're getting on the right train if you're going to a station that's down the split This is Ishan Lu, and I've come here specifically to show you what a long transfer is like. So I'll show you a long transfer and a short transfer between lines within a station. We're at the line 9 section of Ishan Lu, and here we go for lines 3 and 4. And they are elevated lines, so there's quite a lot of elevation required. And again. And again. Okay, so you can see that's quite a long way and there's a lot of stairs. Really the advice would be look ahead, you know, if you have some accessibility questions, the newer the line, the better by far. Okay, so if it's anything like line one through five, there's probably going to be less access um, ease. So I'm just doing this tiny little loop here, okay, so nine, four, one. Long transfers are not always the case, even in a station as large as Xu Jiahui. Here we are at line 9, and I'll take you to line 11. And there we are, there's the line 11 platform. So, you know, really only 150 metres. Something I didn't focus on earlier is the exit maps. So you have those in each station as well, and also some information about which bus lines it intersects with. So you can see we came in on exit 11, which weirdly actually splits into two. And what we're going to do is to go all the way down here and use exit one to get back home. There's the Xu Jiaohe Church. And there's the entrance from the outside. So you can spot them. Again, we've got the little uh, SM Shanghai Metro symbol again. There's entrance one and whilst we're here it's worth showing you uh, Xu Guanxi. He's actually why this area is called Xu Jiahui. It literally means the uh, the area of the Xu family. Uh, he was into everything, uh, a bit of science, lived in the 1600s. Um, science, astronomy, uh, some agricultural machines and also things like war machines as well because I think they're quite similar. Uh, he started some schools and you can see behind me this is the meteorological centre in Shanghai or at least one of them. You can see the little swirls on the fence denoting that and that's probably here because of the, the schools that, uh, that Xu Guanxi actually set up. There's the tall building going up at the beginning of the video. Uh, but I'm trying to show you this park here, which is a uh, tribute to Xu Guanxi, and his tomb is actually right at the back. So this is the Xu Guanxi Park. As ever, I hope that was uh, helpful and interesting. And um, hopefully you would consider liking, subscribing, and joining me on the next one. Bye-bye.